Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm putting together a very small, simple solar system. Once put into place and up and running, this system will allow you to charge your e-bike for free and who wouldn't like that? So for this very simple solar project, I ordered everything off of Amazon. That includes the two solar panels that I'm gonna use, um, all of the cabling that I will need. I bought these in the lengths that I think I'll need with the ends already on, so I don't need to buy a crimper or anything like that. It's just easier to buy the gauge wire that you need uh, with the ends already on. Um, basically the same price as buying the cable by the foot, and then you still have the crimper price and uh, the hassle of putting ends on and putting heat shrink and all of that. So this is a very easy, um, cost-effective way to just buy your cables. I bought a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I don't know anything about this brand, but it seems to get uh, relatively decent reviews. So that's why I chose that. Uh, for the same reason, I chose the Smart Solar uh, Victron charge controller here. And this gets great reviews, uh, relatively inexpensive, just a little bit over $100, I believe. I will have a list of everything that I use down in the description. So if you're looking for that and want to kind of duplicate this system or want to use some of the components that I'm using, uh, look there and you should get in all your information. I've got all the cables to run from the solar panels to where I'm going to mount this system. A couple of bus bars here. So I have an isolation switch for the battery, a breaker disconnect for the solar panel. I have two different styles of 200 amp fuses that I'll be wiring in. To mount these solar panels on the side of my house, I bought the kit that comes from the same company. These are through Amazon as well. And it uh, looks like a real nice mounting kit. I can adjust the angle for the season. And I've got one of those kits for each of the panels. Here's the other back here. The company Lee Time sent me one of their batteries to test here. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. This is a group 27 size box, uh, relatively small, definitely on the light side. This thing doesn't weigh much at all. Uh, nominal voltage 12.8, uh, maximum continuous output power of 1280 watts. This battery has Bluetooth, uh, so you can monitor its condition through an app on your phone. That's really handy when you've got this thing tucked away somewhere where it's uh, difficult to get to. We'll take a closer look at this battery later in the video. This is a scrap piece of particle board that I had that has four mica on it. I'm going to use this for mounting everything on. And when choosing components for this system, I chose ones that were nice mid-grade components. They're not the most expensive on the market, but they're ones that people really like and that work well for them. This is the RSP100DC. Um, they're ultra high efficiency and they just they look nice uh, the frames and all are substantial so that when you bolt them down uh, they don't feel flimsy there's a mounting kit for each one of these you end up with a finished product like this so you can adjust uh, by moving this piece here uh, you can adjust the angle of the solar panel itself this is southern exposure here in the winter time the sun comes right across the top of that hill there and so it'll be nice to be able to adjust the panel to the best angle. So even though I bolted this together to kind of see how it is and to hold it up into place to get a fit, I now have to pull these two lower channels off so that I can bolt them to the side of the house here. Here we are with two panels mounted now. Uh, pretty easy installation, nothing difficult about that. Now we've got to come underneath and you'll need a couple of special connectors to connect these two panels together. And from that, we're gonna run one uh, positive, one negative wire down and tap it into the house. These are the two adapters that you need and they will tie the two negatives together and the two positives together into single lines that will run inside. You really can't 
mess this up. Um, you've got two different styles of connectors. The two similar connectors will obviously go together. So pretty easy. This is what you end up with, four wires into two. And it looks something like this. And then you just plug your main leads into these. Hey, everything should be weather tight. And we got a good seal at the bottom there. The first thing that I'm doing here is just laying out all the components so that I can see how they're going to fit together on this board. I also picked up one of these LED emergency lights. Uh, these will run on anything from 6 to 24 volts, so it'll run off the 12 volt battery. I just need a box to attach it to. So I picked one of these up at Home Depot. Uh, I'm going to cut the bracket off the back and then I'll be able to mount this box directly to the board. I'm pre-drilling all the holes for the mounting of the board to the wall. And that way, once all the components are on the board, it'll be real easy to just bring this down and screw it right to the wall. Okay, so I think this is how I'm going to lay out the components on the board. I've got the inverter towards the bottom. I have two bus bars. Some people call these bus bars. I used to call them terminal blocks, same kind of thing. Um, but it's just a way to attach several wires together without stacking them on top of each other. Sometimes you end up stacking them on top of the battery or on top of the inverter posts there. Uh, not a good thing to do. You can put a couple together, but you really shouldn't put uh, a whole big stack of these wires on one post. So by using these, you can get away from that. So this is an isolation switch for the battery. So I can turn the battery completely off from the rest of the system. Um, if I need to work on anything, that's always handy just for safety. It's a good thing to have. You don't have to have that, but I choose to put it in. Okay, so these components are now all screwed down to the board. All of these came with the hardware to attach them. Now we've got two leads here, uh, positive and negative, that are going to go to the battery. And somewhere between the battery and your inverter, you want to have a 200 amp fuse just to protect the both the battery and the inverter should something happen. So what I've opted for is the kind of fuse that attaches to the top of the battery here. One of the other common styles of fuses used on these are these 200 amps here. Theoretically, I could have run a fuse right here between the terminal block bus bar and the uh, cutout switch. So uh, just another way to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and use the one that attaches to the top of the battery. So this system right here for converting battery voltage to a usable household current is essentially done. So we're going to move up and start wiring the solar panel system here. And really this system is just for charging the battery. It really doesn't have anything to do with your inverter. So let's get started on that. Charge controller is screwed down to the board. Now you'll notice here for connections, you've got battery side and PV is your solar panels. So um, we're going to hook up to the battery side first. I've already hooked up the positive to this. The negative is right here. So expose a bit of the wire. Oh, we've got a piece strand sticking out there. Hold on. And then insert that in. And then you've got a little thing that tightens down on the end of that wire. Don't over tighten it, just snug it up and everything should be good. From the battery side of your charge controller there, we've got a positive and a negative. They run to your positive and negative bus bars and those in turn feed the power down to your battery. For a 2000 with a 4000 watt peak uh, inverter like this, the two gauge wires are gonna work great. I'm not gonna have any overheating issues and the 10 gauge is gonna charge nicely from here. First thing, just remember that you should always use a DC breaker and not an AC breaker. So you can't just use the type that you use in your home. Uh, buy one specifically for DC. Now these uh, come together, the breaker 
is locked into this box here. Get this breaker out of the little housing here. You take the two screws off the front, lift the face off, and then you reach down in here with a small screwdriver and you pop these little guys out just like that and then your breaker will lift up and out of the box you've already got the rubber piece onto the wires you've got your cap on the other side of it so you can tighten everything down snap this back in push your little prongs back into place to lock everything in and then you get to try to feed these wires through and into each one of their little sockets and then go ahead and tighten them up. Um, I finally got everything fed through and locked into place. So everything's good there. Just make sure that your positives are on one side and your negatives are on the other. It doesn't really matter which. All right, so here we are. We've got the cables coming in from the solar panel to a breaker disconnect. Comes into the PV side of the charge controller. Power from there comes out of the battery side, comes down, runs through the buses here, through the switch, and charges the battery. So this system is essentially done. Now I just need to hook up the lights. There is the light mounted on the top. I ran the wire around the edge here and tied into the two blocks down below. So we've got power too. I've got a switch right up here on the top. So I can just come up and flip the switch and turn the light on. Just hook the battery up to this and we're going to turn the power on at the main switch here and see if everything comes to life. There we are. So we got our lights that light up the panel. Looks like the inverter stabilized at 118 volts. We've got 12.9 on the battery right now. So I will want to charge that battery up before I'd really do too much running, but I want to check and make sure that the inverter works. This thing has a really high amp draw on it, so it's one of the better things to test. Up down to 11.8 volts. So, yep. We're good there, so the inverter works. Just want to make sure of that before I went and mounted everything onto the wall. But uh, looks like we're in good shape. Now the next thing to do is get this thing on the wall and then get these solar panels hooked up so I can start charging the battery. Before we go any further, I want to take a look at this really nice battery that Lee Time sent me. This is a lithium battery. It weighs a fraction of what a lead acid battery weighs. Uh, we'll throw it on the scale here in a minute and take a look. But it also has a real cool feature of having Bluetooth. So I can monitor this battery, see what the condition is, see what the condition of the solar system in general is right from my phone. So that's pretty cool. So this is coming in at only 22 and a half pounds. Pretty impressive. This battery comes with a nice user's manual and it allows you to download the app for the battery. So this is what the app looks like. Right at the top there, you'll see the overall condition of the battery. Uh, lower left here, you've got voltage. Lower right, you've got amperage. Uh, you can check the balance of the cells, the cells themselves, and the battery management system and see how all of those are doing. So for example, it'll say that uh, everything is in good condition. The cells themselves. Everything's looking normal there. And the battery management system, again, everything's looking normal. So a pretty nice system for just keeping track, making sure that your battery hasn't gone south and without you knowing it. Seems particularly convenient if you're using your battery for RVing, you know, overlanding, that kind of thing, where you've got it tucked away somewhere where it's a little bit hard to get to, something you rely on constantly and you really need to know that the thing's in good shape and working. These lithium batteries have more usable energy in them as well. Um, you can go from 100, a full charge of 100 amp hours, all the way down to 20 amp hours without any ill effects on the battery, and that's considered a cycle. 
over and over using 80% of the battery. Um, a normal lead acid battery, you're really only supposed to run down to about 50%. So a 100 amp hour lead acid, you'll run it all the way down to 50 amp hours and then you recharge. So you've got more usable energy in these batteries. Another thing that's really important to me is that this doesn't uh, self-discharge a whole lot. So less than 2% per month is what you'll lose in battery charge if the battery just sits. And that's pretty good. So that means I can pretty much just disconnect it for a couple of months at a time and hardly lose any power. As far as I can tell, the only downside to these uh, lithium batteries is that they really don't like operating super cold temperatures. So if you're regularly operating below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, this may not be the battery for you, but if you're staying up above freezing, then uh, these should work great. There are a bunch of guys on YouTube that are cutting these batteries open and showing you what's inside. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that, obviously I do not want to cut this battery open. I want to use it. Um, but they have a real nice battery management system in them. Um, they seem impressed with what they actually have the, with the quality of the cells and what they're seeing once they open these batteries up. So they, they get very good reviews and I feel real lucky to have this over three or four of my old lead acid batteries, which is what I was going to run with this system. Okay, everyone. Well, here is the system on the wall and everything seems to be working nicely. So I will eventually be adding another battery to the system just to give it 200 amp hours total. Uh, I think that would be a, a nice backup system for what I'm gonna be using it for, which is charging e-bikes and emergency power to run my furnace here when the power goes out. I live in a rural area and our power goes out a lot, especially during the winter. Uh, the big storms always seem to knock down the lines. So if I can run this um, forced air system for uh, 45 minutes at a time, that in conjunction with the fireplaces and wood burning stoves that we have in the house here, uh, we'll be able to keep everything nice and warm. So pretty cool little system. Uh, I know anybody can do this, nothing difficult about it. And uh, hopefully you're as lucky as I am to be in a state or part of the world where you've got sunshine uh, so much of the time. Here in Colorado, we have sunshine more than 300 days a year. So it's a great state to have solar in. Uh, but thanks everybody, appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next one.